gave you oh, milk ice cream. <laughs> It's it's my I mean, that's also a little bowl of milk. No, it works. Okay, so in this part two of this question, all right, and this is, again, this is, a, this is one of those uh, lab questions that are going to pop up in one, two, and three, and you really say, yes, lab question. I like it. Okay, so uh, again, you got 20 minutes about for each of these, but in part two, you've just taken your 90 minutes of the multiple choice, you had a 10 minute break, and now you got this hour and uh, five minutes, okay, to do this. Okay, so I've got a tablet, a KI tablet, okay, thoroughly dry filter paper, filter paper precipitate, okay, all this stuff, let's go to the question. A student's given a task determining the iodine, or I-negative content of tablets in a KI. So this is one of those empirical or analytical chemistry type of questions. In inert water, soluble sugar as a filler, the tablet is dissolved in 50 milliliters of water with an excess of lead nitrate. Now lead nitrate means very simply that I really have lead plus two and NO3 minus. We should all know that anything with a nitrate is completely soluble for reasons we've just explained. Nitrates, uh, sodium, potassium, okay, uh, are always going to be spectators. Now, it's added to a solution. A yellow precipitate forms, therefore a solid appears. We're making it precipitate, that's what they're telling you. Okay, the data from the experiment is shown below. So we took the mass of the tablet probably crushed it, just like we did the Tums lab. Okay, now, thoroughly dried filter paper before we used it. Now we added the lead nitrate to the KI. Okay, so this is an example of precipitation analysis. Okay, so the K plus and the NO3 will not precipitate, they're soluble. Anything group one, we should already know. But what will happen, is the lead plus two and the iodine will hook up. And that's a demonstration I do every year, and that's what this is right here. Okay? Now, the clear liquid above, I have it just hanging out. Okay? If you don't clean up, it's always available. Okay? So the clear liquid is actually potassium nitrate, and the solid yellow on the bottom is the lead nitrate. Of course, when we did the demonstration, we've got that compound. So that's, we made a solid there. So it's a very common. Uh, precipitate. All right. Now, so we know that lead iodide was made, and you should be aware because this is plus two, and what tells you it's plus two is lead nitrate is PbNO32. So PbNO32 was added. It's two of these. So this is going to become PbI2. That's our solid. Okay. Moving forward. For the chemical reaction occurs, write a balanced net ion reaction for the, for the reaction. Somewhere, somehow, party people, they're going to ask you to do this. Write the net ion. Well, what happened? We made a precipitate. So what's the precipitate? Very simple. We took the what? Lead plus 2, and it hooked up with what? Two iodine ions, okay? And it made PbI2. That's it. Now, if you want to put aqueous to show off, you can. Not necessary, but that's the net ion. Why am I not showing the nitrates? Because they spectate. Why am I not showing the potassium? It spectates in everything. So that is something you're going to see definitely coming up where they ask for the net ion reaction. If it's for a precipitate, which is really what's happening here, that's the only thing happening. What if I mix two things together, just as an aside, and there is no precipitate? Is there a reaction? No, there's nothing. It's just free ions mixing together. Okay, so that's an easy point. Sometimes that could be two points. Correct reactants, correct products. All right, so that to me is a, is a giveaway. Okay, next question. Explain why the reaction is best represented by a net ion reaction. Okay, well I can talk about the fact that this is the only part of the solution that's doing something. So this is the only part of the solution I care about. Or I could say on the inverse that the other ions that are not part of the reaction are spectating. Many ways to skin a cat, I go navel up. 
but certainly this is the only part of the solution. I love cats, but you got to skin them right, okay? So you have to make sure that you're just talking about um, what just happened there. So many ways just to talk about that, that'd be fine. And if you look at the answers, they may say it differently, but it's the same thing. If you stay with good chemistry, you'll be rewarded. Okay, explain the purpose of drying and weighing the filter paper with the precipitate three times. Okay, why am I taking the mass of the filter paper and the precipitate? And by the way, if you remember what's happening here, we crush the tablet, okay, we put it in solution, we add the other compound, we precipitate, we filter, we put on the filter paper, we put it in an oven. Why would I bring it back out and keep reweighing and keep reheating? What am I making sure? Get rid of all the water. You're getting rid of all the water. This sounds a lot like the what? The hydrate lamps. Okay, so you just making sure you're getting rid of all the water. That sounds pretty simple there, right? So this is procedural. This is something we spent a lot of time on. You should be hammering home this answer to this question. Okay, so far so good. Okay. Um, in the filtrate solution, K plus is greater than, less than, or equal to the nitrate ion. Okay. In the filtrate solution. Now that means after you added the silver, after you added, sorry, I'm going to silver something, but after you added the lead nitrate, remember we had Ki in a beaker. And you know, Mr. Grotsky, how is this part two? Don't they love to draw diagrams in the multiple choice? It says X. Okay, no, I'm just drawing the scenario. I had lead iodide, right? Yeah. Isn't there one iodine to one silver uh, potassium plus? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a one to one ratio to start with. Okay, then I added what? Lead nitrate, which broke apart into PB plus two. Mm -hmm. And now how many? How many nitrates? Two NO3s, two no, two and I'm running out of room here. So I know you guys love when I do that. Okay, so make my beaker bigger. All right. And I get two NO3s. I don't know what color that was, but hey, I'm tall. All right, now, what do we know? Okay, now I added what? Excess, excess. So I'm gonna have excess what? PB plus two. So I'm going to add excess PB plus two and there's what? Let a lot more load. Yeah, there's two <laughs> nitrates per each what? PB. So for every PB there's two nitrates. My gosh, I don't have enough nitrates. They're coming out of the beaker. They're flying out. Okay, now what do we new party people? We know that what? The PB is going to hook up with the what? I. Hey. So all that I goes bye-bye. Okay, so clearly Okay, who has to be in larger quantity? Now I added excess, which means I'm gonna have some lead nitrate that's not reacted, correct? Yes. And I'm gonna have some K plus. So just drawing that diagram and understanding what was happening. So uh, what was the question? In the filtrate solution, after I filtered, okay, is the K plus greater, less than, or equal to the NO3? The K plus is less because I added excess lead nitrate and the nitrate didn't react Okay, I have to have more nitrates than potassium. Okay, besides, I could also talk about lead nitrate is a two to one for every lead. So I had to add more lead ions per K pluses if it's an excess, and because there's twice as many nitrates per lead. Now, again, if you need to, draw, draw, draw. But I could ask you this same exact question, party people. I can give you the same exact question in a multiple choice and say, which of the following pictures describes a scenario where I add excess lead nitrate to what? To a solution of Ki to make the precipitate. This is all multiple choice material, as, as you've seen. If you're doing the work I'm asking you to do and going with multiple choice, this is a, a huge parallel, okay? And something you should chew up and say, thank you very much for giving me those questions. Okay, so D, calculate the moles of precipitate that's produced. Now we get to some math. Moles of precipitate. Well, before I do any of that, I'm going to have to realize that moles of precipitate, I have to figure out how much precipitate I have. So party people, let's get some, um, some space here. All right, so moles of precipitate, here I go. Here I go again. Okay. 
So I'm going to use, just as we talked about, the last mass, okay, 1.698 grams. That's the precipitate after the third drying. We made sure all the water was driven off. And now I'm going to subtract out the filter paper, the dried filter paper, okay, which is 1.462. And when I subtract those, okay, I'm going in some I'm going to some, some, uh, some territory here where I'm using my head. Uh, six, three, and I think two. So 0.23 grams is of the precipitate, which we know better is the lead iodide. Okay, now, they wanted what? The moles of the precipitate, correct? Yeah. So I picked my 0.236 grams, and I'm gonna have to figure out a molecular mass. Since I know it's PBI2, Okay, then I know that I gotta look up uh, lead, okay, because I'm a geek, I know this. Lead is mass of 207. Okay, iodine, because I'm a geek, is 127. Times two. Okay, I add that together, seven times three is 21. Two, four, six, who do we appreciate? Okay, molecular mass, yay. So 461 grams per mole. That's my estimate, and I'm off by a gram or two here and there because of rounding. I can live with that, and so can you. Okay, so what would they give you, my friends in chemistry? You say, thank you very much. They will give you a point, definitely, for just the molecular mass. They will give you another point for converting to moles. If you don't pull out nine, I, I would think, at least eight points out of this question, okay, which you're going to get a question I don't know exactly, but you're going to get somewhere on your test something like this. It could be a part two. Thank you very much. This is 2014, so it's a good shot that you get something like it again. Who knows? That's why we spent so much time. So in any case, you have a calculator for the section, 0 0.236, divide by 461, okay? And I get uh, my answer to be somewhere in this range, so the moles would be uh, 5... Uh, 5.12 times 10 to the negative 4. And don't give me eight decimal places. That's too many sig figs, okay? Don't get, you know, you can't be abusive like that. And that would be moles, okay? Very simple, I, I, okay? So I believe you get two points out of that question. Now, back to your question. I think we're getting there slowly. Yes? Okay, another quick question. Yeah. So on the test, should we use like all the numbers they give us? You can round and they would take that fine, okay? If they're not using it in their, in their um, answer booklet, don't worry, round to the nearest whole number. Everyone does that, okay? Even the researchers at some point, okay? It's a good enough estimate. Uh, okay, so down the moles. Calculate the mass percent. Okay, now that I have the moles, okay? This is where you're gonna get two more points. Now that I got the moles, and I'm gonna have to sit because my back is Killing me. Ugh. All right. So now that I got the moles, what can I do from there? Now I can get the grams. All right. Now, now first thing I'm going to do is take these moles and realize what it really is. This is the moles of lead iodide. Correct. It is. Now, what I'm after, and this is where you're going to get an extra point, is the I, isn't it? All the I negative that was in this beaker here got hooked up. In fact, there were what? Two of them that hooked up to a lead plus two. So the first thing I do is take the moles down here, okay, very important, and relate it back to the iodide. So for every what? One mole of PBI2, and I'm writing a lot here, I wouldn't expect you to do this on the real test, there is what? Two moles of I negative, correct? So I'm gonna take this value and do what with it? I'm gonna times it by two. Okay, so now my friends in chemistry, I take my two times 5.21, so I get two times 5.12 times 10 to the negative four moles. If everyone see that's gonna equal the moles of what? It's going to give me the moles of, of the iodine ion. So this is going to equal moles of the iodine ion. They're going to give you a point 
for recognizing the fact that this mole here was related to the iodine by timesing by two. That's a stoichiometric relationship. I don't know what the key says. I know how they've been doing things because it's, it's, it's the same thing. They're gonna give you a point for timesing that by two. Okay, so we do that, okay. And I get 0 0.001 moles of iodine. Great. What am I do with that? What's the whole question? I want the percent by mass, correct? Yeah. So I want grams. So it's not I2, it's iodine atoms. So I believe it's 127, okay, grams equals one mole. I just make sure that I'm right. Uh, probably am, I don't believe myself. So 127, good, because the whole problem been wrong. Okay, so do I need to actually do this in a calculator? No, I can do that. It's gonna be what? It's gonna equal to what? Come on, you can, this, is, this is where you have to start getting your math down for your multiple choice. A thousandth times 127 is what? 0.127. They could do this to you in the multiple choice. Easy math. 0 0.001, except I'm doing it wrong. Okay, easy math. We're dividing. Okay, so 0 0.001. No, okay. you're 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 yeah. Timesing by one, then I'm dividing by one. Oh, yeah, I just set it up wrong. Okay. Bad Grotsky, good pizza. All right, so some of it's right. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of mole. And for every one mole, okay, there's 127 grams. Sorry, always check your units. Now I'm timesing that by a thousand, and that becomes 0.127 what? Grams of iodine ions. Hello. Now, ding, ding, ding. They may give you a point for that. Now, how do I do percent? Part over two. Right. So I take my, let's see if I can wipe this out here. So I'm going to take my 127. Bless you. Over what? My total mass of my tablet, which is 0.425 times it by 100, and that's the answer. You want this kind of problem. And you're going to see this type of problem pop up in the multiple choice. In fact, the weird part about this, it did pop up in the multiple choice. In question four or three in the multiple choice. That's the weird part, is not only are they happening, it's happening in the same test. Okay, I'm seeing, okay, so I don't know if they have quality control or they just want to do it that way to remind you. So I'm getting uh, 30, about 30%. Okay, and the last question, I know you didn't ask for it, but hey. In another trial, the student dissolves a tablet in 55 milliliters of water instead of the, the 50 milliliters of water. Predict what the experiment determined mass percent will be greater or less than or equal to. Okay, if they used more water, would it matter? No, because it was the amount of what? Tablet that was dissolved. The limiting factor in this problem was exactly how much what? how much potassium iodide you put in. Now you could have put it in a lot of water, a little water, but it doesn't matter, okay? The limiting factor was how much of these guys you had. So, so that last question is, it had no, absolutely no effect to add water because the entire question or uh, lab is based upon how much K and I you had to precipitate wasn't based on a molarity, it was based on how much you dissolve. So if you use a lot of water, a little bit of water, it didn't matter. When we did the lab, we didn't really measure the water. I said about 100 milliliters. We didn't do exactly this lab, but the Tums lab was something we did a lot like this. Okay, so that is the first question on 2014, and that's an example of a lab question. Okay, um, so what else do you, do you want to continue? Oh, oh, we're, still, we're still with the same question. Let's continue with G. Okay, what the heck, they kept going. Student in another lab wants to determine the I negative content of KI tablet, but does not have access to lead nitrate. However, the student does have access to 0.2 molar silver nitrate, which reacts with iodine to produce silver I. The value for the KSP of I, AGI is 
times 5 times 10 to the negative 17. That's really, really tiny. What's that screaming to me? That, yeah, it's very insoluble. Did they give me KSP for the other one? I don't think so, right? No, no they didn't. Okay. So this is telling me that this AGI is going to be actually very, make it precipitate as well. So AG plus will hook up with the I negative probably better than the lead nitrate, even though we didn't have a KSP to make AGI. Okay. Will a substitution for silver nitrate for result in the precipitation ion from the solution? The answer is yes. Justify your solution. This would be a one pointer with justification. And you would say, Yes, because, yeah. Have we, have we seen this before? Have we seen a question before where they make you look at the KSP and say something? Yes. What does a KSP that's really tiny tell you? It's insoluble. It's now, what I will say to you people, because sometimes you get crazy, KSP really means this, that the, that the insoluble compound, solid, when it breaks apart into its ions, so some people get confused about the directionality of these questions. Always, KSPs are always written, oops, not CL, I negative. Okay, always written like this, and this is aqueous, <laughs> Christmas in July. Okay? So always rewrite your KSPs, but clearly because this is very, very what? Small KSP that favors the what? It favors the formation of the precipitate. That means, and the best way to say this, with a small KSP, and what is a KSP? It's really a KQ, it's products over what? Reactants. And if it's really, really small, how many times have I talked about this? A small KSP, KSP means you have small amount of products or a great number of reactants. Now in this case, we can't put the reactant here because it's a solid. So it really just means a small number of the products, which are the ions, which means it's insoluble. It favors the formation of the reactant. Many ways to say that. But you could say with a small KSP, the reaction is barely soluble. It's mostly insoluble. It favors the formation of the precipitate, not the ions. Many ways to say that, okay? Gosh, I've seen this in multiple choice as well. You've got to start seeing this. The student only has access to one KI tablet. Was there two here? I don't know. Because we had two tablets, then we divided by two, and I didn't do that here. Okay, it looks no, like there was. In the back, your answer's right. Okay, okay, all right. Sometimes I'm right. All right, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just an actor. Okay. No. Um, two, the student only has access to one KI tablet and a balance that can measure to the nearest 0 0.01. Boy, I've seen this before. Will the student be able to determine the mass produced to three significant figures? Okay, no. now, no. well, let's look at it. What's the initial numbers? If the mass of the tablet <laughs> is around point four something, okay, four to five, if your starting point is the mass of the tablet. Now, some people look at this and say, oh, Mr. Grodsky, no, because it only goes to two decimal places, so that only will give me two. That's the wrong way to think about it. Because the tablet is less than one, okay, the tablet measured out to what? Three decimal places, and they all would be significant. The answer to this would be no, because you would have a what? A you would have a mass of your original tablet, which is less than a gram, only measured out to what? two values, and that would be the least what? Significant value in all of your work. And so as a quick way to do that, you would say no, because the tablet would only give me two significant figures measured with this scale, and that would be the least significant number. Now, I don't know what they say. I would, that's the best answer. Uh, some people say, well, you're doing a subtraction, least that's number of decimal bad. places but I think that's the best way to go out about business, okay? About your business. Significant figures are a little bit tricky when there's multiple steps, okay? But I look at, look at, I like to look at the entire step and say, who is the least significant, okay? All right, so where else do you wanna go? Do you wanna go back to the multiple choice here? Okay, let's do that. Okay, give me uh, a second to set that up.